Good morning, Darren Daily friends. This morning, I'm gonna answer one of your questions. This one was written in the comments by Jerestine Sayer from Melbourne, Australia. I hope I got your name right, Jerestine. She wrote, what advice would you give an emerging leader? How to assure your team and motivate them? Okay, this is a good question because so many leaders do this wrong. I think because they have been falsely influenced by politics and Hollywood. So I'm gonna tackle these one at a time. So let's start with assure your team. Politicians lie. Have you noticed? They say what they think you wanna hear or what they want you to think, not actually what is true. The truth has no basis in their rhetoric. The truth doesn't matter at all to them. Only their image and the agenda that they have does. Politics is all about just image and agenda. The steadfast rule in politics is never apologize, never explain. Can you believe that? And even when they are caught in a lie, they will not admit to it or apologize. Have you noticed that? Why is that? Because in the game of image and agenda politics, there is no upside and there's only downside. But when political leaders admit a mistake or error, that is a moment that can cause the even ardent supporter to doubt their loyalties. And although opponents of that political leader might be happy to see that kind of candor, they are not going to switch their vote just because a politician they dislike acknowledged being wrong. So from a political perspective, even if a leader knows that he or she is wrong, a public admission of error generates zero political upside and risks alienating somebody in their base. And in the press, it is one of the unwritten rules of political coverage. So long as there is no consensus over the confirmation of the wrongdoing, the reporters feel uncomfortable taking sides. But once an apology is issued, the apologizer loses control of the story entirely. I'm sorry is not treated as coming clean, but as a guilty plea. In theory, a public apology gives the press a chance to move on to the next controversy. And in the past, perhaps that was true. But in a Twitter speed news cycle, politicians who admit faults get all the downside with almost none of the benefits. So what do they do? They lie and they, quote, never apologize and never explain. Unfortunately, you would think that our government leaders would be our best examples of emotionally intelligent, character-based leadership. And it was in the, say, Washington, Lincoln, or Gandhi, or Mandela, or Churchill times. But in fact, they are, for the most part, the worst examples. This is how Winston Churchill would advise you to assure his countrymen, particularly in times of crisis. His address would be broken up into three parts. You wanna take this down because this is what I'm advising you to do as well. This is good stuff. I hope that you capture this. Number one, he would deliver a sober assessment of the reality, the brutal facts, no sugarcoating, no glossing over. He would hit you with the depths of the crisis that lay at their feet and the hardship that the country would inevitably be facing going through it. Always start with the truth the stark, if not even brutal, hard truth. Don't deny the truth. Give your troops evidence that you see it and that you understand it. So now they can have confidence that you know how to deal with it. And then number two, he then starts to lay out the logical reasons to have hope. What was being done to address the crisis? What was being mobilized? What resources were being provided? and the progress that was already being made. And then number three, he'd end that with his Churchillian type of rally cry. He'd give you a reason to fight, a purpose, a cause. He'd attach the action he needed you to take, to take your pride, to take your identity as a Briton and mobilize it. He'd ask you to, quote, stand strong and united and never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Never give in. Never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in. And if you do, this has the opportunity to be your finest hour. So 
To wrap up the first part of this answer to this question, to assure the people that you lead, don't do as you see done by those who are supposed to be our leaders by ignoring, lying, denying, or telling people what you think they want to hear. All that will do is have those people lose complete faith and trust in you and anything that you say from that point forward. Instead, start with the truth, as clear, stark, and as straightforward as possible. Then the logical reasons to have hope, and then the emotional rally cry that ties their purpose and pride to your call to action. That is an advanced lesson on leadership and communication influence. I hope that everybody took notes and will refer to this anytime they have to address people in times at any level of difficulty. I will finish the second half of your question on how to motivate your people in our session together tomorrow. Be sure that you're here for that. So Darren Daily community, tell us what big aha struck you today about the lesson we just covered. Make some notes in your Darren Daily Journal and feel free to share any thoughts that you have about assuring the people who look to you for leadership in times of crisis in the comments below. Do you have what it takes to succeed, even in difficult times? One thing is for sure, it is easy to succeed when things are going great and you have the wind at your back. It gets really tough when you have headwinds, disappointments, and the world around you is telling you that you're headed in the wrong way. When you ask yourself, do I have what it takes to succeed, to lead, and to prosper, even in the midst of these crazy and unsettling times? And my answer to you is, yes, you do. If you have not attended the Indispensable Training Broadcast, I invite you to do so right now. In under an hour, I will walk you through the vital skill that is urgently needed now, a skill that will make you irreplaceable, invaluable, and highly paid in this radical new world that we're entering in 2021. This is how to ensure that no matter what comes ahead, you will have the means to protect your family and your future no matter. Follow the registration link below. Attendance is free, but capacity is limited.